and gentlemen, welcome to the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast. I'm, of course, Nick McDaniel, and as always, I'm joined by my mom, Iron. Yeah, we are here at our wrestling research offices, taking the time out of our busy wrestling research schedules to share what we have learned with you again this week. Ah. That's right, man. Listen, I am not going to lie. I am drag assing, uh, so yeah. I'll push through this as best I can, folks. Uh, I have been sick for two weeks, yes. two full weeks. Very um, sick. I have, I have, uh, I've gone to a couple shows with Nick, and he is almost dead now. Yeah, I um, this I literally may have my third urgent care visit today after we're done recording oh, for geez. this. But um, so anyway, uh, we'll muscle through as always. Um, but listen, couple things I do want to mention, Myron. Uh, got some specials coming up. Hopefully, we're going to drop them over on our Patreon, Ooh. over on the YouTube here in the next week or so. <clears throat> patreon.com uh, forward slash tapped out pod of course over on the youtube channel youtube.com search at tapped out pods the handle or of course you know tapped out wrestling podcast subscribe you know like the page turn your notifications on all that great stuff or whatever but become a member over on the patreon page man and uh like look when you get the show early like we record early on wednesday like uh, and so we drop it as soon as we finish i go ahead and put it up on the on the patreon page as well uh, but also some exclusive stuff that I'll discuss a little bit here um, to pick up later this week. Where do they search for your handle at? At Tapped Out Pod. Okay. Yeah. Clarify. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. At Tapped Out Pod is the handle for everything, whether it's on social media, pod, it doesn't matter. Search at Tapped Out Pod. You'll find us, man. That's for sure. So, listen, man, look, it's been a crazy week. So, you know, we discussed it briefly a little bit last week. The Rock returns to WWE on Raw. <laughs> now, of course, all of the last week, the buzz has been nothing but Jinder what Mahal. are they going to do? Yeah, exactly. It's going to be Jinder Mahal. Who the is hook? <laughs> um, God, I love but, this. Uh, it's but, been crazy. Who do you think? I mean, everybody's booking The Rock. Everybody's booking The Rock through WrestleMania, Nick. And we look at all these notes and we look at all these plans. Even Bubba Bray is getting involved. Yeah, man. I mean, look, there's, you know, we, we discussed it and we ran some scenarios. I mean, I've, I've seen and heard and, you know, every chat group we're in, you know, everybody's throwing ideas out. Uh, look, Bully Ray's idea was simple. He's like, have rock win at chamber, become the champion. You know, Cody wins the rumble. Then that turns it into a three way at mania where it's rock Roman and Cody for the title, have Cody pin rock. Cody's your champion. And coming out of there, because then he goes, look, and I understand the logic. I don't know that I agree with it, but I understand the logic of it. It makes sense from a business perspective. The logic is you come out of a mania and you have two opponents for Cody. You have Roman or you have Rock or, you know, I mean, I don't think you're going to have Rock after mania, but you have Roman potentially or you have Orton who spins out of the, you know, out of the uh, four-way thing, you know, potentially. So I think there's lots of ways you can get there. Do we have to have interference if we have this four way? Do we have to have interference, Nick? Can we get a steel cage? Can we please get a steel cage at the room <sighs> or something? How are we going to do this? We we I mean the rumble is the main event, right? It has to be the main. Event. Is it? Uh, I I don't know. I'm just sitting here and it's like I every we watch the three way dance. And they interfere in that. And Roman's not even in that, but they still interfere in that. The bloodline interferes in everything. Can we cut back on the interference? I'm tired of all the interference. I, I think see. that's the I think that's the tool we use to get where I what I would do. And then look, it's just, just what I would do. It doesn't matter. Um, just my stance on it. Um, I think I, I probably mentioned this last week. Look, the bloodline saves Roman at the four way at the Rumble. Rock comes out, cuts some kind of promo that, you know, he's wanting them. He takes Roman on one-on-one -on -one and uh, at the Elimination Chamber. Jimmy and Solo get involved, and they, you know, they 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 mess that up. Cody wins the Rumble. So, therefore, we still end up with Cody versus Roman at Mania. But then maybe we spin into, like, Jimmy and, the, uh, Jimmy and Solo versus Rock and Jay at Mania you know, to try to like fight the whole, you know, try to take down the bloodline all at one time kind of thing. Who knows? Um, but that's where I would go. Cause look, I think 
do you feel cheated? And this is at Tapped Out Pod, by the way. This is a question for for listeners as well. Do you feel cheated at all if Cody finishes the story but he doesn't beat Roman? Like if he, you know, if if along the way somehow, you know, we get. Uh, look, one 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 theory out there is what 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 happens if uh, Randy Orton wins in the four way. And you get, because he could beat anybody. Remember, that's the crazy thing. Roman doesn't have to get beat. So Randy Orton wins. He's your champion. And then Cody faces, you know, finishes the story against Randy Orton at Mania. And I'm like, I get there's a story there, but do I feel cheated if, you know what I'm saying? Like, What's Cody doesn't story? beat Roman. Is the story is he's got to win the title? Yeah. But I think the chase for so long has been chasing Roman. You know, there's there's more than one royal family in wrestling. You know, all that kind of stuff. I just, I feel like I want Cody beating Roman. I think that's the issue at this point. I think Cody, I mean, did you, here, okay, at Tapped Out Pod, part two, answer this question. You built Roman for this, I mean, listen to me, it's been years now. You have built him. If he loses the title in a four-way where he doesn't even get pinned, who benefits from that? See, that can't happen. He's got to lose that title at Mania. He, They're not going to waste this. Listen, no. I, here's the crazy thing. I don't have a problem with him not losing at Mania. We had this whole debate last week about other PLEs becoming raised. You know, they're all premium events now. They're not Mania, but they're all premium events. They're, I mean, like, if, if you were to tell me Rock beat him at, you know, at the Elimination Chamber. I Okay. I'm still not okay. Like, uh, it's not what I would want, but I, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, but okay. I need Roman to be beat by somebody to, like, you know, the, 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 the ever-loving rub, you know, that's, like, give all that you built and invested in him, pass it to somebody. Don't have, like, somebody win the title in a four-way where he doesn't even get beat. Well, I'm frustrated um, because my entire theory that they were going to wipe Hogan off the books is gone because now they're going to celebrate Hulkamania's 40th anniversary. And that means I'm mistaken. So if Roman's great run is going to not mean anything and it's going to, it's not going to be the thing that erases Hogan because they're going to bring Hogan back before it's over and cash in on all that red and yellow, they're going to take the belt off of it. And that's the only the only logic behind it. If they're going to take the belt off Roman sometime soon so they can have their Hulk moment, it'll have to happen. But that run has been so long, I think it's a mania moment. I know, I know giving it to the Aussies down in Australia will really make it look good, and it's a big, big marketing thing. But I would hope they would do it at Mania instead. No, I think they do. I do really think they, like, ultimately. But here's the thing. If it was at Rumble in the four-way, I'm like I said, I, my biggest hang-up on it is if Randy Orton becomes champion, he's got to pin Roman. Does that make sense? Like, I just, Roman has to be beaten. I just don't think it's going to happen, by the way. Um, I want to see Cody and Roman in the finish the story, great battle at Mania, finish the story two, where it's made up like the Thriller in Manila, where one of those giant matches, those giant, giant brawls get set up and they work through the story and it's promoted. I, I, I think that's what that's just what I want. I'm I'm selfish. That's what I want. Is WrestleMania only one night or two nights this year? It's always two nights now. I don't know. I kind of looked at. I, I'm confused. I got to look at the calendar again. But I want to see this massive, massive build for this this match that just takes everything and focuses everyone's attention on it. And it's the highlight of the entire weekend. Yeah, I think that's what I said. I, I can see night one, and I know people are like, oh, let's get Punk versus Rollins as main event night one. Yeah. And the, um, But my thing is, if we go Rock 
Jay versus Jimmy solo, do we get like in the in the Cody main event versus Roman, Jimmy or yeah, Jimmy and Solo try to interfere. Rock, think about it. Rock and Jim Jay come down and stop him and fight him off, you know, hold them off, and that's how Cody gets the win. And you have the big crowning moment in the demise of the the bloodline collapses at Mania. That's you know Paul falls. Oh. Maybe yeah. one of the old Samoans comes down and beats Paul's ass. Oh, God. So Could many happen. inspirations. Could happen. Yep. Um, but like I said, uh, that's my take. I, I hope that that's what we get. I, but I, at the end of the day, I think we got to have Cody. If if Cody, I will feel gypped. Let us know at Tapped Out Pod if you agree or disagree. Would you feel gypped if Cody actually does win, but he doesn't beat Roman? Um, look, that's not even the big, the big news came out, I guess it was yesterday, uh, maybe look, it's, it, this whole two weeks has been a blur at this point, but I think it was yesterday. It's not booking, it's money. That's where the big news is in sports and sports. Um, sports business journal predicts out that, uh, it looks like Amazon video prime video will get raw. Um, look, I don't know this is true. This is not accurate. Of course, who, who, you know, it's, it's wrestling journalism. It doesn't have to be accurate. So <laughs> So let's let's go under the on the premise that it is accurate. Um, the, the rumors are that it'll go there. It'll keep it on Monday, by the way. So you'll keep it. That'll be the tradition will live on that. It will still continue to be Monday Night Raw, which is kind of cool. Um, the, 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 the odd thing will become what will the wrestling world do? Because ratings won't matter anymore. They can't. They can't compare it to AEW. They can't check the numbers. Nobody will be able to see the numbers unless. No, they you can. You can see the numbers. Them. Yeah, the numbers come out. Like you can see, like how many things are viewed on those on the streaming services. That's. I mean, but that's. But the problem is, it'll just be like it doesn't matter live. It's going to become you know a, like watch on demand. Like, but I understand they want look. They they have. They are trying to push to a live, you know, audience to some degree. They already have Thursday night football. Uh, this would add another night, you know. But now, by the way, it also would add fifty-two weeks of another night versus football season of you know, young male demographic, disposable income types, people who waste their money. Younger than us, still. I mean, I waste my money, but it's the premium audience they want. They want the people that sit there and be like, I'd like a new television. I sure would. I need another remote control. Man, I'd like a new laptop. Gee, bye, bye. Oh, I'm watching sports on TV. I'm watching Amazon Sports. That's great. Maybe I'll buy a, a wrestling belt. Maybe I'll buy this. Maybe. It... Did you see? You saw those 3D printed wrestling belts I sent you. God, those looked horrible. They didn't get those off Amazon, by the way. Uh, if anybody actually sees those, but you, you're trying to get a market. This brings in more consumers. So say these people, you get prime, you were saying you get prime for Christmas or you get prime for the NFL season. How many weeks a year does raw run? 52. So that would make you want to keep your your subscription year round people I, who pay monthly i didn't even know you could pay monthly they hit me for the whole year yeah i i understand that you know a lot of people the logic is like oh it'll drive subscriptions it will drive some but i don't think it drives any significant number I think what people don't realize is that your Netflixes, your Maxes, your Prime Videos, your Peacocks, they have to justify, they have to justify keeping the service all the time. Because those services, streaming services are the kings of, I'm going to sign up, I'm going to binge watch the show that I want to watch, and then I'm going to cancel. Yeah. The, you know, look, and. I know a lot of people are like, hey, I like you said, I'm going to sign up during the ho football season because it's also the holiday season. So I'm getting my free delivery, you know, on all my Christmas presents and I'm going to get the football season. But after the holidays are over, I could cancel my prime, you know, prime account and not even worry about it anymore. 
Well, now you're adding a value of like, yeah, but if you're a wrestling fan, you know, and you want your four episodes of Raw every month, well, then here they are, you know. Yeah. See, I mean, I love Prime. I love Prime Grocery. Prime, Prime. Look at this. I get this delivered to my door. It's a, it's like two 20 ounce bottles of Diet Coke. It's a dollar and 58 cents for two 20 ounce bottles. I don't have to carry it in from the grocery store. They bring it and sit it on my front porch. That's another prime advantage. There's so many things they offer. I don't even watch the, the prime video, Nick. I, I'm not an NFL fan. I, I don't watch the Thursday night games. I, I don't watch any of the stuff they usually have on video unless Melissa's watch it. I come upstairs. I tend to watch uh, Disney more than anything else. Have you seen Echo, by the way? Not yet. Oh, the first three episodes have been. I love Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin. God, he's he's he to me is is the best one they've got, best character they've got on any show. But I do, I go off again. I really really think this is going to be a, another catch for sports. I know it's sports entertainment, Nick, but every time they pull another piece off the network television, first it was football, now it's wrestling. Maybe they'll get some baseball games. Maybe they'll take markets. Maybe it's they'll Look, get the Dodgers next year. Max Max already. Uh, uh, Apple Plus has baseball. Max has hockey, basketball. I think it is. I mean, they're all starting to piece away at these. Peacock Sports has things. That. Uh, is that a playoff game? Peacock has. They have an exclusive playoff game. This, yeah, it's not even. It's you know, it's, it is what it is, man. I mean, we're getting to where if you're not, you know, you brought up you know, like what about the person who doesn't, you know, have streaming and or isn't as familiar? Like you better get on board because everything is slowly chipping away at that. That that's where a lot of stuff's going to be, and uh, so for raw like, and the thing about WWE. They are always, and it just seems like they have always been the trendsetter, not the, like, let's wait and see what happens and let's ride it. I think, you know, they pay-per-view. They were one of the early ones, yes. uh, you know, jumping into the cable. or Streaming. You know, st streaming services, they jumped in early. Yeah, so it's like Internet. Look, they, they, they kind of are always tend to be on the forefront. So for them to make this move doesn't really stun me. No. And uh, I, I could say, yeah, this was a, this is probably something we have all should have co seen coming, to be honest with Nine you. Nine days after Kevin Dunn uh, quits, they hire the guy who basically built ESPN's entire television package. Everything they've done, that Fitz guy, they hire like one of the most brilliant people in, in, in sports television to take his place. They are innovative. It's cutting edge. Everything they've ever done is cutting edge. People yep. don't realize it because it's wrestling. And that's a stigma attached because it's wrestling. If it was any other sport, it'd be respected. You know, yeah. it completely. Yeah, it'll definitely be, you know, it'll be a game changer for sure. But speaking of game changers, man, look, I know the football season may be coming to an end. We're heading into the playoffs. But you can still make some money over on our friends over at Prize Picks. You still working on this? It's two minutes to kick off. Who do I pick? Two words, prize picks. It's so easy. Prize picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. It's just you against the number. Simply pick the over under on two or more players and that's it. You can win up to 10 times your money in just one day. Join over 150,000 people who found a better way to play. Download the prize picks app today and get your first deposit match up to $100. That's right, man. Make sure you're checking our friends out over at Prize Picks and uh, get a look. It's real simple. Get your bets in, bam, and get your payout super quick as soon as you know, look the next day. Uh, uh, but look, we were discussing the uh, the Prime. You know, if 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 uh, Raw goes to Amazon Prime, that clearly means they're not going to Warner Brothers Discovery, uh, which, by the way, would change. We said it for all intents purposes. Clearly, everything points to the signs. If that's the case, then. AEW probably gets they stay home. I think that's best for everybody. I think it's I I, I don't think that anybody should be changing in this situation. AEW is at their best spot on uh, Warner Brothers Discovery. I think it's where they 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 they'll be appreciated. 
I think if they're if they go anywhere else, too much is going to be expected of them. You know, I think I think they really need to be in a spot where they're more comfortable with them. And I think Warner Bros. Discovery is uh, they they have less expectations because of all the money they've spent on like the NBA. You know, they can't afford NBA and WWE. Do you think? And that's no. isn't that what you were telling me. Yeah, my whole theory was that I think if they keep the uh, NBA rights, there's no way they afford NBA and WWE. Um, and look, I mean, look, when they if they've clearly moved on, they've done a great job of coming out and touting, you know, AEW about hey, they're they're a huge pers- you know reason for our growth in the in the key demo. Uh, like, look, we we love them, and I get it. Look, and I, you should. The second you realize you you went out and you courted the girl up the street and you realize like, hey, it's not going to happen. You're going to come back and tell everybody that your current girlfriend was better than, ever, you know, you know, that's so I give them credit, <laughs> all the credit in the world for coming back and touting AEW. And look, and it's look, it's not like if if they have been happy, I, I never thought here's the thing. I never thought Warner Brothers Discovery wasn't happy with AEW. I think they got caught with the case of the grass is greener. They thought if they went out and could get WWE, then maybe that was the you know a better scenario. And by the way, in hindsight, looking at it, I don't know that the amount of money it would have taken to lock up WWE, I don't know for sure if you would have gotten your return of your investment. So the value may be there better for you in the long run with AEW. Well, I mean, how much market share does, uh, you're right. You're right. WB wanted so much. AEW would give you this for the little bit amount of money and loyalty. So maybe we just keep it the way it was. Maybe we don't reach out and try to grab something bigger and spend that much more money. Look, it's business. I don't have any qualms with them actually looking at it. But if you're sitting there going like, "Hey, we're paying," and I'm making some numbers up, by the way, if it's like, "Hey, we're if we're we're making we're paying them fifty million, whatever," okay, fine. If we have to pay WWE two fifty, are we going to make five x on the ad revenue? No. If that answer's no, I, look, I don't know. I'm saying if they if the answer to them was no, then stay with what you got. I mean, that's kind of what I'm saying in the long run with them as far as goes. So, um, I just think maybe. You know, it, the, the investment for pound for pound to them was worth just staying where they were. And look, I'm, I'm happy for AEW if it works out because I, I, I would have hated for them. I honestly really was concerned that if WWE were to go to Warner Brothers Discovery and they got booted off, it, no matter where they went, it probably would have been a downgrade. They would not have ended up on a cha- you know a channel no. that was equal. I would have. I would really have to pay more attention to the commercials to see if there's a drastic difference in the commercials between the AEW and WWE to see if I thought there was a revenue difference, you know, if, if, if it's the same demographic, how different can the commercials be? No, it's not even that. It's a, it's also, it's a, it's a little more complex than that. Um, as far as like they're selling a lot of times you end up selling, you're getting bulk rates. So it's just kind of like we're giving you time uh, versus like specifically buying what because the, the network selling those those commercials, not like WWE, uh, you know, because it's through the channel. But even though you might could have the same commercial airing on two different shows and you're going to be paying more for one than you are the other. Does that make sense? Based on ratings. Ratings and uh, demand. Like if it's just like. Hey, we promise you we're going to give you X amount of minutes of commercials in bulk. You're buying them in bulk. They're going to spread it out and put it across everything. If it's like, look, we just aren't selling as many advertisements at AEW, so therefore we, we've got to use our filler minutes You know, we're, we're using versus somebody specifically coming in and saying, we're going to pay you this much and we want it on that show. You might get wonder, a better rate. Do picture-in-picture commercials cost less than regular commercials, do you think? I would think that here's the thing. I don't know, but I would actually argue they should probably cost more because people don't turn away from those. Oh, I can't stand picture in picture, but you're probably right. You're probably right. People don't look away because there's wrestling in the corner. 
Right. But, but I can't stand. I would rather fast forward through picture in picture commercials than just regular commercials because they bother me. They just bother me. I don't like it. It's worse than not having wrestling on there because it's just distractions. Ugh. I just, uh, I don't know what it is. It'd be different if it was like live sports, but they pause live sports for commercials. You know, yeah, TV timeouts I mean, and such. Yeah, but with sports, they're usually they're shorter and they like people don't typically jump away. When you're talking about live football and stuff like that specifically, people aren't jumping away as much for that for sure. So, um, but look, that's not the only business stuff that came out this week that I was, look, you know me, I'm always piqued by interest a little bit when it comes yeah, to the yeah. the business side. Uh, Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics has, uh, he put out some new information this week about the uh, annual attendance trends uh, over the last few years. Um this is one of those scenarios where I tell people numbers don't lie, but you can make them say what you want to say. This was surprising to me. This was very surprising to me. Once you broke this down earlier in the pre, our pre-show, which I'm glad people don't get access to, um, you broke all this down. And what was your what was your final take on all this? So let me give you some of the numbers first, and then we'll, we'll kind of go, we'll break it down at the end. So in 2019, they basically ran 17 events and they sold approximately 95,500 tickets. 2020 was the COVID year. They only sold like 39,000 tickets across 11 events. You know, that was Daly's Place and all that kind of junk. Grocery. 2021, they sold, uh, they had 36 events. They sold about 205,000 tickets. 2022, they had 71 events. They sold 363,000 tickets. And 2023, they had 95 events and sold over 502,000. That's pretty crazy. However, you know, and it's funny. We both had to saw the same numbers, and we took it differently. That's the funny thing. Because, you know, it was a... The... The actual, from 2022 to 23, the average attendance actually has gone up. Like, the myth is, hey, their ticket sales are terrible, you know, blah, 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 blah. But they went from 5,100 to 5,300 as their average. It's still down a little bit from 2021. They were at 5,700. I'm going to come back to why I think that could be the case. Matter of fact, let's do it now. So, the average went up from 51 to 53. Um, by the way, do you know what really helps your average? When you have a show that sold 81,000 <laughs> tickets. That really helps your average. Um, so that's like, here, like, you're watching me. Nick's going to go like negative Nick, positive Nick. Like literally back and forth mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. I'm talking about how we make numbers say and do what we want them to do. So, yeah, I could be negative and go, well, of course your average went up. You had the highest, you know paid attendance record of all time, you know, for a wrestling event. You had 81,000. Of course your ticket's going to be boop, booped up because you didn't do that. By the way, you didn't do that show the year before. So that's tremendously going to help your average. Um, well, but you're down from the year prior to that in 2021 at 5,700 because you were new, you were hot, it was a hot ticket, and so you were sell, you know, and you did less events, so it was a rarer ticket, so you sold more tickets. Now, that is that the first year prior to COVID, you said? No, 2021, the year after. Okay. So when everything got hot again and they were released, they were a hot ticket because think about it. By the way, that's when WWE was in, they, they were in their rut. And everybody the was television like, was horrible. Well, people were telling us it was horrible. Whether it was, that's all subjective, right? Yeah, Creative you got a good point there because, I mean, I was not, not overly displeased with it, but it was a lot harder to dig through it than it is now. Because you know, I'm, I I judge raw on the middle of raw. That's how I tell to me if it's a good program. Because raw always starts great, and raw always ends great. But there's a there's at least an hour in the middle that sucks. Typically, here lately, that hour has been about fifteen to twenty minutes. You judge it from like nine to ten o'clock. Yeah, because eight to nine, nine to ten, ten to eleven. So you judge now, it nine to ten. And now, if you if you look at it, the only part the the part that's I judge the bad part of Raw has shrunk 
down to the point I'm really not fast forwarding to as much anymore. Okay, because I watch it on DVR. That's how I judge. I watch it, and I judge it based on what I fast forward through. <coughs> and it's anytime they say Ivars and and whatever the other guy is, the barbarian horde. What's those guys' names? I can't remember the guys that dress the Viking up, Raiders, the yeah. Viking Raiders. That's fast forward time. Um, sorry, but that any, that, that whole time period in there is, is the boring. Now I love Otis and I love Chad Gable, but there's a spot where it slows down in the middle, but the whole show is getting better on the whole to the point where it's not as eh. The mid, your mid card guys are getting better and more interesting. Like the Miz is killing it, in my opinion. Our truth is double pulling his weight. The Judgment Day <laughs> is amazing. The women have picked up and are doing all kind of awesome stuff. So that kind of reiterates my point. What I said this last week, AEW. I don't know that they're as bad as everybody's saying they're just to get stronger competition so they're just they may pale in comparison as a little more than they had been i think that's been their biggest obstacle in my opinion they make themselves look bad by by its asses per square seat because they they run bigger arenas well i I did notice by the way they are running some smaller events i saw they're running in a, a um is it nevada maybe i saw they're running like a smaller like a minor league hockey team. So it's probably a 5,000 seat, you know, and I hope that's where they get into. Cause we've been saying that like, like that's their, if you can, if you're selling four to 5,000 seats, run 5,000 seat, you know, those, those arenas. So it's a hotter ticket. Cause it's, you know, you're selling them out. It can create a premium, create a buzz. It's harder to get into there versus, you know, last minute you're, you've got, Look, they all do it, by the way. Remember, look, WWE is guilty as anybody when it comes to tickets for live events. They were doing those $10 nosebleed seats and, you know, buy four family four packs and all that kind of stuff. So it's not just an AEW problem. It's just when you get hot, it's not a problem anymore because you're filling 16,000 seat arenas. So uh, but I, my point being was the whole thing we were going with was that when you look at the numbers of doom and gloom, like, look, they're actually up year to year. Yeah. On attendance numbers, the average per building, they just I think chose the wrong building, so per, the perception changed. And I well, think run that's Gwinnett what Arena, if you come to Atlanta, run Gwinnett Arena instead of Mercedes Benz. You know, Mercedes Benz is where the Falcons play. Gwinnett Arena is a much well. They run State Farm team. when they when they ran Atlanta. They ran State Farm, the arena, the, the Hawks Arena, is where they ran. We'll still crank it back another nine. Dude, I would honestly, I would have picked a smaller building than Gwinnett. As crazy as that sounds. Was there, a, is there a smaller building than Gwinnett? Sure. Run the, uh, what is it? The, um, the Cobb building. Uh, there's a Cobb Civic Center or whatever that holds Energy, about 4,000. Something like that, I think. It holds like 4,000, 5,000 maybe. That's what I'm saying. Just be more selective about the building. Don't feel like we got to go to the name brand. You know, look, ECW was smart. They did it for a long time. They ran some of those little smaller buildings, and it looked great on TV. But that's you know. Well, NWA is running in Dothan. They're running a small venue, and the ticket prices are reasonable because they're shooting on TV. They're shooting for TV. They're shooting not almost. They're shooting a studio type show. So fill it up with lower price tickets. Make it look good on for TV for the. For the, what you're packaging, yeah, you know, if that's what you want, make it look like that. Yeah, I agree. Um, look, before we move on, we got to get into one of our favorite segments of the week, man. Look, yeah. every single week we get, you know, I, I rough itch through. I just kind of dig through uh, over on Pro Wrestling Tees and find a shirt. This week I found Maybe one. It, it's a it's a super cool design, by the way. Casey Navarro. Uh, look. Casey Navarro, like a lot of people, are like, hey, well, how do you find this? Look, I heard rumor he's coming to Georgia soon. So get your Casey Navarro. So prowrestlingtees.com, search Casey Navarro. Um, and so I think that, look, I love the little military look. I think it's a cool look. Love the color, by the way, Meyer. You know why? It's not black. Not black. Yeah, we love it when we find shirts that are not black. That's always a cool, <laughs> cool, cool concept. Uh, again, Casey Navarro, this week's Pro Wrestling Tees Shirt of the Week. Uh, look, 
let's talk, discuss a little bit about this past weekend. Uh, somehow I did manage to drag my body through a whole weekend, you know, Friday and Saturday of shows. Um, and that's probably what happened to be honest with you. Cause Sunday's when I completely just fell apart. So, well, you, you know, you, you couldn't have drug yourself out there and seen more people in, in two weeks, two weekends at shows than we have this week. I mean, when is the last time in two shows you saw a thousand people basically? Yeah, it was a good week. And it wasn't even the same people. Okay, the 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 crossover of those two audiences was very small. Very small. Very small. Usually usually when you go to these shows you see a good number of the same people night to night. Uh uh-uh. uh. These were very unique audiences from Canton to Monroe. Uh I saw Hunter James at uh both shows and that's why I'm wearing my little Hunter James gold crown. Uh, I was worried he got hurt Friday night, though. Mm. Yeah. Um, Chip look, dropped I, him on his head. Chip did teach him some manners. Taught him a lesson. So, you know, she kind of shows, right? Uh, when focused, you know, and he looked focused because he was pissed. Um, but, yeah, at Southern Honor, look, to I, the highlight of the night, obviously, it seemed to be the surprise of cruel. Nobody expected him there. Matt Griffin comes out. Uh, look, to his credit, he came out there uh, by himself, you know, and started, you know, shooting his mouth off. And uh, Gary comes out and confronts him. They have their confrontation. And then, of course, cruel comes out. And that's the last we saw of Matt Griffin. He took off. Um, so, look, cruel is the, is now. And look, we said it all along. Cruel was the under, you know, uncrowned undisputed now he is the officially crowned iwtv world champion he's he's uh, he you know he was voted and nominated for for georgia wrestler he's not a georgia wrestler cruel has transcended georgia as much as i love my georgia wrestlers he wrestles all over the country now he's had contracts for bigger companies he, he, the fact that he comes in and graces us with his presence, that's kind of kind of special. If you get to catch him on a show, it's a big deal. You know, you're lucky that, that, that you get to catch him live on a $15 ticket anymore. Yeah. I mean, he's a production video guy. He's got his own, you know, his own internet videos and horror core matches out there. If you can catch him while he's, and I got me, I got me some cruel spies. Uh, Look, cruel hands down. I is probably one of the most unique individuals right now in the game, especially across independent wrestling. Um, I, we've been on that train for a while and I absolutely love, and I cannot say enough great things about the monster. Um, and I'm looking for bigger and even bigger things from him in 2024. I, I got a feeling that picture with those all that gold hanging up in the shed, there's going to be yeah. more gold hanging in that shed for sure. I, 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 I Georgia is just full of sheds. Yeah. So many um, sheds. Other highlights that you know, look, uh, just all kinds of stuff going on that night, man, up there at Southern Honor. Uh, had a great crowd, uh, lots of good stuff, great show overall. Um, anything stand out to you on the card other than that? Um, like, I mean, I look that the hierarchy, wild. you know, it was just absolutely wild. Surprise, surprise, surprises. Uh, I never cease to be amazed at who comes out. Gunner Miller surprised me again. I, I, I had no, you know, I try not to find out who's there. You know, I, I, let's be honest. We're privy to a lot of information about shows but i don't like being privy to too much and i was so surprised gunner miller was kind of like siding with the hierarchy maybe what the hell was time that? will tell that more time will tell that's right man you got to see what's going on that's uh it's a, it was a twist that we did not see coming that's for sure um but look who the hell's this new guy this chosen guy that's like seven one seven two. I'm this monster uh, that they had. I, I'm curious to find out more about him over the next you know few months as time goes on. Georgia uh, wrestling keeps getting bigger. Literally, yeah. I mean, bigger and bigger and bigger. 
Uh, it used to be big guys like like Judas was a super attraction. He now is. he's he still is, but look at look at look at the wall that Tyler guy as Tyler Stevens, and now we got this chosen guy, and then we got uh, wow, we just okay. got monsters everywhere you turn around and look. It's insane. Uh, and then we go to this to, we go to Southern Fraud. We got five hundred people there for anarchy. 500 people and we sat near <laughs> the guy sitting next to me was on the left was deaf and there were deaf people all around us and then matt hankins comes out and cuts one of his god georgia wrestling misses matt hankins he is such just a majestic on the microphone he is able to draw hate wherever he goes he made deaf people angry. That's how good a promo it was. He made deaf people angry. And there was a little kid, Nick, in front of us that was doing this at heels. He was shooting them two birds. And the deaf guy next to me is like pointing at me like, no, no. sorry, I didn't mean to make that noise. That was horrible on my point. But he was pointing at him like making symbols. I don't, I don't know sign language, but it was he was displeased. And all I could think about was when I was twelve years old, and my daddy took me to to Batwell Auditorium, and I got up on a seat. I was like shooting birds at the at the hills because it was I was passionate. And I was angry, and that little kid is a wrestling fan from now on because he was passionate, angry at the hills, and Matt Hankins and all those bad guys made that kid passionate. And that was a hell of an anarchy show. The magic anarchy brings out in people. It was like they drugged those people out from somewhere. People I hadn't seen since the last anarchy show in Canton. People Look, I'd never seen. Anarchy has a loyal fan base they do, that this will travel and will go see them. Uh, will it be month to month? I don't know. You know, that's that's going to be the challenge. We're going to time will tell how often they run and where they run and things like that. Um, but they have a base that does hit the road. I mean, like I said, they travel to Canton. They obviously travel to Monroe. So like, like they're going to get out there and travel. And so I think I'm really excited about what's in store for them. Uh, but look, the, the night was highlighted by the main event. Oh God. Judas defending the anarchy championship in a, in a ladder match against Nick Halen and, uh, main event, Nick Halen comes ladder through match. and yeah. Ladder match. Holy shit. What a, what a just a gratuitous amount of violence. David Manders, owner of Southern Fried, promoter for the event, was busted open with a ladder. Oh, Rodney, the security guy, got his nose broken earlier in the night. It was just a just a violent show. The, the energy level when we walked into that building was insane, and it stayed like that the entire night. You were just caught up in it. And then when that, the, the ladder match happened, and, and that guy, that secret mask guy came out and, and attacked Judas, and, and that let Nick Halen win. Wow, that crowd was crazy, Nick. And that match was insane, and there was so much going on. Yeah, Scott Mason kicked ass. I, I love getting to see Scott Mason work again, uh, and and Jeter with all the the little things Jeter does to make things so massive. Uh, I love seeing Lev and uh, Nadja. There wasn't a bad match on that card. Almost everything was a title match. You it know? was a great card. Definitely check it out. I'm sure it's going to be available on their YouTube channel at some point soon. Wow. Uh, and I'll, I'll probably honestly share either the ladder match. That might be the one that I pick it when it's available. Share it on our YouTube channel as well. But um, look, that's that was this past weekend. Now we're heading into this coming up Ooh. weekend. Everybody's talking about, look, IWE, they, they, they've been, you know, they're coming off of their Kings of Controversy show. And uh, before we get in talking about it, let's show it to you. Augusta, Georgia. Are you ready for war? Saturday, January 13th. It's 12 men, one cage for IWE versus the hierarchy. 
Join us at 90 Millage Road for a night of intense action featuring all of your favorite IWE stars. Bell time is 7 p.m. and tickets are available now at iweonlinetix.ticketleap.com. That's right, man. IWE, this is this Saturday down in uh, 90 Millage Road in Augusta, Georgia at the American Legion. Uh, look, it's it's coming off of their big Kings of Controversy show. They've got their big War Games match. It's uh, Joe Black, Murder One, Shug, Skrilla, Kenway, and Tim versus all three members of the All-Star Special, Owen Knight, uh, Cody Fluffman, and uh, Sean Legacy in a uh, War Games match. I hear it's going to have a twist. I don't know that it is your traditional War Games match. So let's it's not two rings. I think it's one ring. There's some changes. We'll see kind of how that thing plays out, to be honest with you, um, what the rules are. Um, so Tim's in the ring. Tim's. Tim, the wrestler, not Tim Blackman. Oh, yeah, ding. Um, so whose team uh, is whose team is is Kitchen Song? He's not on anybody's team. He's not in the ring either. He's the he's the hierarchy. He's with the hierarchy in IWE. So he's the heel. Yeah, he's the manager uh, for the heels, uh, for the for the bad guys, as they say. And uh, Timothy Blackman, he is uh, leading the charge with the All Star Special and that group. So they're defending his honor from getting his ass whooped at the last show by the hierarchy. So they're trying to get revenge for the ass whooping they put on him at the last show. Uh, Look, that'll be, we'll see what's going to happen. I'm curious to see where they go with it. Um, I don't, I've tried to verify there are no stipulations as far as like, I thought it was going to be for control of the company or something, uh, but I don't think it is. It's just, you know, them trying to get revenge for uh, for that ass whooping, like I said, they put on Tim. Can Timothy they put Blackman. an ass whooping on Kitchens? Is there any chance uh, that um, could happen? Couldn't happen to a nicer guy, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying I'm not saying I want that to happen. They could take his shoes off and paddle him with them. Those those Jesus shoes he wears. Mm. Uh, uh, look, it's gonna be it's gonna be a solid card, top to bottom. By the way, oh, a uh, lot of stuff. Danny Jordan versus Lindsey Snow, the IWE Women's Championship. Uh, we've been talking about it forever. That Danny's just oh, she is overdue at this point to capture yeah. gold. Yes. Um, so time will tell here and see. I think that that you know maybe as that time has come. Perennial uh, favorite uh, women's uh, women's wrestler uh, Georgia uh, women's wrestler of the year. Danny is always. Always is a top of her game. Yeah. Uh, always talking about her to people outside the state. She's always, the people that respect her outside the state of Georgia, you'd be really, really surprised how many people sh- that are talking about her outside of Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's another one that'll be out. Of, she'll be gone soon enough, I think, as far as, like, she'll be bigger than Georgia. Yeah. Um, Cruel and White Mike, look, they both have mystery partners. Looks like they're going to be in a tag match. Uh, that feud's going to continue on down the road. Uh, I think all roads lead eventually to they get, they've got to have that one on one title match at some point. Um, you know that's eventually I think where we're heading. Uh, but we're, I'm curious. You know they they've got my intrigue. They have me intrigued with the mystery partners. Who do they bring in? Like, cause here's my thing, dude. Who the hell bring who who does Cruel trust as a partner? That's just crazy. That's the crazy thing. Um, but then you've got Slim J, Alex Kane, Exotic Youth, and many more on the card. Uh, so definitely want to check it out. 90 Millage Road down in Augusta at the American Legion. IWE, big show this weekend. Definitely check them out. Uh, give them a follow on social media as well. You know, and you draw can real well. Them. They draw real well. They fill that building out. Um, definitely get in contact and go ahead and get your tickets as soon as possible. Uh, I would be there if, if I were able to drive that far. Uh, people know about my physical uh driving uh, issues so folks get out there it's going to be a great show i can't wait to see the reports please get those in where i can see them uh send me any personal reports y'all know how to get a hold of me so that's, that's right man listen a whole lot of stuff going on about that you know look before we get out of here we want to make sure you're telling you know make sure you're signing up over on the youtube channel youtube.com at tapped out pod is the uh, handle search tapped out wrestling podcast as well like it subscribe turn your notifications on all that good stuff hell even become a member also by the way we'll throw in there make sure you know patreon.com forward slash tapped out pod you can sign up over there and become a member there as well get the show early and you know get some bonus content 
I'm fully aware, though, as we always say, look, we've got a lot of people that are Spotify. I don't know why, how Spotify came out of nowhere. As well I get a lot of them, too. Yeah. People ask me uh, about it all the time. So if you are a podcast listener, make sure you're subscribing. We are on all of them. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, even Amazon Music Pod, Amazon Podcasts. Subscribe. You know, Give us a five-star rating review if you so feel inclined. We greatly appreciate it, man. Uh, make sure also, by the way, you're supporting the show by supporting the sponsors on the show. Lipson.com. If you want to do a podcast like us and you want to do a podcast, Lipson.com. Use the promo code TAPPED. Sign up and get up to two months for free. Um, it's a, it's the only, it is the only, only, only podcast service that I recommend. Uh, it's just, look, we've tried other ones in the past. You know, we did dip out for a second and it was the worst mistake we ever made. And we went back. Fully endorsed. So, absolutely. Lipson.com, promo, the promo code is tapped. And of course, make sure you're, you know, look for all your pressure washing, window cleaning, gutter needs. Check out our friends at jmartinandcompany.com. Again, that is jmartinandcompany.com. Follow them on uh, Facebook as well. Shoot them a message. That's the easiest way to get a hold of them. I, for all of your commercial and residential pressure washing window and gutter cleaning needs. Anything else before we get out of here, dude? Because well, I, I am just, fading I was, fast. I was wanting to, to just one thing. I uh, I know it probably was. Oh, God. Damn. Uh, sorry uh, for the cursing. Uh, my two hairs I had remaining got caught on this. Uh, folks, I bought this thing at uh, Hunter James's gimmick table. I, I wore it as an advertisement for him at this show, on this show. When you're at a wrestling show, stop by these guys' gimmick table. Pick up a little something. Help support them. You love them? Buy a t-shirt. Pick up a a, a pen or something keep them keep them on the road help pay for them gas is expensive you know get them from show to show so you get to see them just do do a little bit wear their stuff when you go out make people you know make promoters see these guys help keep these people visible support your local wrestler support your local wrestling promotion go out to indie shows we talk about these shows all the time there's shows everywhere you go, to, no matter where you are in the continental United States, Canada. I don't know if there's, I'm sure there's shows in Mexico. I don't know about the rest of the world, but there's independent wrestling no matter where you go around here. So just look online, find your, your local wrestling show and go out and support it. Buy some gimmicks, buy some tickets, get a hot dog. I like the candy they sell and diet cokes nick likes bottles of water that money goes into the pockets of hard working people promoters the people that work the booths the people that go out there and work in america hard working wrestlers just just support these people they go out they put on a product that you enjoy and they risk their lives for your enjoyment. That's all I got to say. Uh, I really enjoy doing this podcast also. Thank you for listening. Well, if that's all you got, man, what's the old saying, brother? If I've got nothing and you've got nothing, what time is it? It's time to tap out.